Hello, I'm Mike Potnopoulos and I'm the academic coach for Springdale Public Schools. Today I want to talk to you about how to hip a document. This is a very needed skill for anybody in uh, our district who's taking the AP World History course or the AP US History course or an AP European History course. You're going to perform this drill um, in a live fashion when you take the um, end of course exam and you create and, and you write a DBQ, uh, which is on just was well, it, it's on every final exam. So um, to be able to get good at this uh, at this skill would only enhance your chances of being very successful on that test. Um, and again, this skill goes a long way in helping to break down and uh, if you will decode documents that you're going to see and especially cold documents that you've never seen before perhaps. And um, again, it will help take away maybe some of the fear factor that comes from this. And the more you do this, the better you're going to get. Um, so let's take a look at it. It is the analysis and reasoning section of a DBQ. And that's why we're doing this. Let me get a pin uh, going here. Um, so that's what this is all about. It's that part of the rubric that we're going to obsess on here. And again, what we want to do is we want to talk about maybe the document's point of view, the historical situation, the audience and the purpose of the doc and how that's relevant back to the prompt. More importantly, how it's relevant back to the answer to the prompt. Um, and so that's what we call this the HIP. It's H-I-P-P. -P. And again, some of these are, um, you know, when you see any document, let's pretend this is a document over here. Some of these documents are going to be like really awesome historical situation and maybe an intended audience, but it's going to be very difficult to find uh, purpose or very difficult to find POV. Some of them maybe it's they it's got three of these things and it's missing one. So again that's one of the things that we're gonna have to get good at is is, is just letting things kind of happen naturally and the best way to do that is to make sure that we always have a prompt. If you're trying to do a DB or a, a, this drill without a prompt for it to associate with you're really going to um, you're really just going to try to do a lot of forced um, uh, writing and forced thinking and maybe even lead yourself down some rabbit holes. And you certainly don't want to take that skill into uh, the uh, onto the test or when you write a DBQ in class. So again, let's keep that in mind as we as we as we do this. So here's what this might look like on the like if you were to walk in my class and you go, OK, today we're doing the hip drill and you see this on your on your desk and and so there's the hip drill and you put your name there and then you read the prompt and here's this prompt and you're going to see that this is all about how did non-elites approach to modernizing their societies from 1800 to 1900. You read the document, you come away with an answer that Sultan Abdul Majid really, uh, he, 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 his approach was to create the Tanzimat reforms. So he was, he was positive, he was for it. These are great reforms that model that of the West. So that must mean he's trying to act like the West, etc. And now I can start doing my historical um, thinking, my purpose, my intended audience, all of that will go towards feeding that answer and not just out here willy nilly, just throwing stuff at a, a wall and, you know, and hoping that this historical nugget that I just gave to somebody was good or that, well, this, you know, this, this perspective is good, etc. No, we're, we're trying to feed this thing. This is that relevance to the answer, to the prompt, if you will. We're trying to stay relevant like that. Again, this is what I've already talked about. Make sure you have a prompt to go with your doc. Again, students will get into the habit of just history dropping if you don't do this. And again, also there are some docs that just don't have all or some of the hip ideas in a doc. So don't get in the habit of forcing a hip. Don't do that. Let's don't do that. Let's just ha make it happen naturally, and it will. So let's go ahead and, and hip a document. Uh, again, like I said, we're never going to hip a document without a prompt. Evaluate the extent to which non-Western elites' approaches to modernizing their societies have differed during uh, the period of 1800 to 1900. So um, let me get my uh, pen back out here. Uh, again, this is the word that I'm probably going to see a whole bunch of times if I'm about to write this DBQ. I'm not going to use other words. Just giving you some other skills that I might use for the DBQ. I'm not going to use other words. I'm going to use words from the 
prompt. If you were a student of mine and you saw WFTP, and if you saw a question mark around it, that means that you're using different words, and maybe the words you're using do not coincide with what we're trying to do on this, on this DBQ. So again, I'm probably gonna write the word approaches a whole bunch of times throughout this DBQ. And their approach is how do they approach modernizing their societies? So that must mean that some people probably ran to it and thought it was a really cool idea. And maybe some of these other documents were, you know, um, not so uh, hip to the idea and they went away from it or tried to stop it. So again, see, when you understand the words they're using, you can probably even kind of like um, uh, predict the kind of uh, documents you might have coming your way. Here it is, document one, Sultan Abdul Majed I, ruler of the Ottoman Empire, decree initiating the Tanzimat reforms. And I really don't need to read the, I don't need to read this anymore. And I don't wanna mark it out, but I mean, I really don't need to read this, this document anymore if I know what a Tanzimat reform is. If I know that, I, I know that it's an enlightenment movement from, the, from these guys in the Ottoman world. They're emulating the West all day long and they're doing it because their empire is crumbling before their very eyes. And so he, this is one of the sultans that's trying to do that. And again, notice right off the bat, our 150 years before now of strength and prosperity have changed into weakness. And we got to stop that. And if you keep reading, he's saying everybody needs a public hearing. Probably means we want to get away from public executions like they've done in the past. Uh, we want to act like a Western law, uh, a, a Western courthouse might act. Everyone shall have the right to own property. There he is talking about that. Everyone can buy and sell freely. Security to all religious groups. We call this religious freedoms. So again, his response or his approach, let's write it right correctly. His approach is that he created the Tanzimat reform, which is a good, it's just like enlightenment ideals. It's just like being the West. So he is for it. He loves the idea of um, uh, becoming modern. And maybe this will help to maybe keep his empire from fragmenting and falling apart further. So there you go. <clears throat> now let's hip this thing. Let's do some historical uh, situations around it. So the historical situation that's relevant to the prompt would be this. The Tanzimat reforms themselves are a series of reforms centered around enlightened ideals created out of Europe's Renaissance and age of reasoning. There you go. That would be good. That it relates back to the prompt, how this guy really enjoys it. Um, um, the Ottoman Empire was fragmenting. You see, the Ottoman Empire was losing Greece. It was losing Egypt as early as Napoleon back in 1800, earning the nickname the sick man of Europe. And maybe they wanted to quit that. Maybe they wanted to uh, switch that around. And, um, and again, I saw this on the, on the, on the essays throughout the, this year's reading. There was a lot of kids that said the sick man of Europe and they related it back to the prompt and they got their points. Western powers acted as the doctors administering goods to the Ottoman world so as to keep them from being taken over by the Russians. This is, again, the Russians were a rival to the Europeans and the Europeans were trying to keep them out of warm seaports and keep them out of their shipping lanes. This is known as the game. And I had students that wrote this in their essays and it was correct and way to go, they were, they were right on. And so, and this is again, these are things, the game, sick man of Europe, these are things that are, if, if you just throw a nugget down, that's that's not going to help you. But if you relate it back to the prompt and show how this is how this is uh, the Sultan's way of embracing modernity because they don't want to become like this, you're winning. You're doing a great job. The Ottoman Empire was founded in 1450 and it lasted well until World War I. This means that these Ottoman people had had a long history of negotiating with the West. So it's not surprising they would grab new Western improvements. That makes perfect sense. So again, uh, what the West was doing over there with their new and with their new enlightened ideals, it took it it took a while, but the Ottomans finally said, "Well, we're going to do that too, because we're so geographically next to you." See, this is completely opposite of what we're going to see in other documents, like say the Chinese. They didn't want to be like the West. So there you go. <clears throat> Intended audience, uh, you can start thinking about this by saying to yourself, who is the real intended audience? That really helps me. When I say the who is the real intended audience, this leads me down a path of like really cool thinking or oh, I don't know. And so you just kind of stop it and then you're not chasing rabbits. So who is the real intended audience? 
Um, the Tanzimat reforms were a way to stave off any more decaying phenomenon. So who do you think would probably enjoy that? I would say this was probably to draw cohesiveness to all those people who are not Muslim. Perhaps this is a way to keep the number of European businessmen in Istanbul. And perhaps this is a way to stop any future rebellions. Because you see, the Ottoman Empire is a very cosmopolitan society. Lots of different people. And so let's try to uh, you know, include as many of these people as we can. And that's the real intended audience here, is all the different peoples. How about that? Now, now you're talking about real intended audience. That's good. And I saw some students write about that. And that makes perfect sense. And again, all this refers back to the prompt and back to the answer to the prompt. That's why the, using a prompt in a, hip, uh, in a hip drill is so important. And the purpose of the doc, again, I start off with the real purpose of the doc. And sometimes this will start you right down a good trail of good thinking, and sometimes it'll lead you to nowhere. And you can get out of it immediately and just say, well, there's probably no real purpose here that I can find. But it's going to help keep riots down. It's going to help keep civil wars from occurring. Maybe by passing the Tanzimat reforms, it'll keep um, these Western enlightened ideals. Maybe it'll keep the Westerners themselves looking to do more and more business with Europeans. Maybe if I'm, if I'm Ottoman, I'm thinking maybe if I act European, look European, talk European, maybe I can create further alliances with these guys in the West and keep the Russians away from us and maybe get to where we can protect ourselves even better. The purpose of the doc. Point of view, like I said, is very tough. This point of view is very tough. It's, um, this point of view is very, this point of view is very tough. There's no juicy POV here, no obvious stuff, um, you know, uh, like we do, like we see sometimes. However, you could probably grab something from the tone and talk about that. Maybe this guy's trying to sound very authoritative. Maybe in the face of obvious opposition from the young Turks who would feel insecure sharing their authentic Muslim heritage with so many incoming infidels. This is his way of passing these rules um, this is a way to maybe uh, quieten their quieten them and show off that his that 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 he's the boss, etc. Um, and and that sort of thing. Of course, that's probably not going to work as the Young Turks rise up later on in the 1880s. But notice the the date here is the 18 um, the 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 date of this doc was 1830s. So there's so many things that you can't talk about in this document if you're going to talk about. Um, say, the Crimean War, because that comes later. That's in the 1850s. But it might help your next document, which you're going to find out might be the 1860s. So anyway, that, that, that's what I mean. Just, just dropping history nuggets and just walking away. Don't get into that. Focus in on the prompt and on the doc and answering that document to the prompt. And now you can really do this hip drill and be very effective with it. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please reach out to your teacher and, uh, and, and, and get with them. Of course, I'm always here to help as well. I'm Mike Fontenopoulos, your academic coach for Springdale Public Schools.